Okay. So this is your startup screen where you can open up previous projects. Um, most of the time on, you know, when you're starting out like this, uh, you won't have that. So um, what you'll want to do most of the time is click on under the blank templates, uh, the map, right? We'll go ahead and do that. This pulls up a, a couple options where you set up the project. You can tell it where its uh, home location is, as well as the name of the project, right? So this is, uh, I'll just name this one GIST 115 intro. I don't, I don't like to put spaces, but probably doesn't matter for the map itself, but something like that. Now the location, it's probably not a good idea to put it on the computer itself, right? So it defaults to the installation, you know, settings or whatever. And that's going to be on the computer itself, but it's better to use the server, right? Your H drive or this new um, server that we just connected to. It has more space. So it, it's in fact, your H drive is limited to 100 megabytes, I think, or maybe they've upped that, but I don't think so. But uh, the server that we have is dedicated for this class or for this program. So it's, it has two terabytes. And so um, it's almost full, but I delete stuff every so often, keep it clean. Or anyway, we're going to use that. <laughs> so let's go to uh, the browse, and we're going to go to the Gonzo classes, and we'll go to our GIST 115 folder. So we'll click it. And um, you can see that the previous class, and I'll delete those. I usually give students about a year to you know, get other stuff from projects from this class as they go on to go get some stuff if they need it. But um, we're going to create a folder in this folder for your own um, purposes. So if you go to new item and folder, I'm not going to do it because I already have my BWS folder. That's my folder. And so all the projects that we do and stuff, I put I put my stuff there and you guys put your stuff. And so if you just use your initials, it'll probably, I don't think anybody shares the same initials in here. Which reminds me I should take a roll, but we'll do that. Every time you kind of get somewhere, something else happens. But that's okay. <laughs> And then once I make that, just hit OK. Yeah, go ahead and make your folder. And it should show down in the name box at the bottom. And when it does, um, go ahead and click OK. And that's going to be the location for this project. No? OK, let's go to that screen. Not yet. Well, yeah, actually. Uh, well, there's one other thing, a checkbox I wanted to point out.
So I do want to explain that one checkbox though, and it may it may be pretty self-explanatory for you, but I'll just explain it anyway. Um, so inside your folder, it's going to create another folder for this project, which isn't a bad idea, right? So you might have a chapter one folder, chapter two folder, and so forth, or whatever. Or this, in this case, a GIST 115 intro folder, right? So I'm going to leave that on. Um, I won't always want to do that, but in this case, I think it's a good idea. So I'm going to click OK. And finally, I can get to my Mac, right? <laughs> Everybody right so far? Yes. <laughs> All righty. So it may take a minute to build the folder, right? Right now it's just, it's writing to that server and that's why it's taking a little while. We're kind of on the opposite side of the campus from the folder from where that machine is. Yeah, got to wake up the gerbils. Okay. <laughs> so now um, it has some base map data, right? So what I call a base map data is kind of just your underlying stuff, right? And then you can you can put layers on top of it, right? So you already have two layers going on right now, and we can turn those on and off as needed. So that's kind of nice. Okay. Um, World Hill Shade. And I've already talked about Hill Shade just a little bit. So I'm going to zoom in on this just to see it. And I just did that by rolling my mouse wheel. It's another reason they don't support the Mac. How uh, do you get to the war of Hill Shade? Yeah, I only got oh. a couple of graphics there. That's weird. Okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so if you turn it off, you don't get it. But anyway, world topographic map, that's the other layer. Um, I'm, I'm a little surprised why it doesn't, or maybe it just takes a minute to load. I don't know. I think that's the whole map. Yeah. So yeah, you can turn those on and off, right? And so um, I'm going to leave the topographic map on, and I'll leave world hill shape off for now. Okay. We're going to add our own data in which we may just turn all of that stuff off and just have our own data in there anyway. So it doesn't matter at this point. OK. We're OK so far? So um, off to the right, this is where a lot of the work happens in this window. You have a bunch of tabs across the bottom of that window. And you may see the catalog tab. That's, I think that's the default. Okay, good, good. Doesn't always have to be, but in this case, that's good. Um, oh, just for um, for grins, if you go back to map, oh yeah, let's double check that. I don't have cash, but I got catalog. Oh yeah, as you open stuff up, it's okay. Oh, okay, so sorry, that doesn't matter. And like I 
I said, just for grids, I'm going to go up to, um, just to point out, across the top, you have project, which gets you back to that license stuff or whatever if you want. Insert, map, analysis, view, edit, imagery, share. You see those? Those are different ribbons, right? So ribbon-based windows stuff, right? If you go to map, you can go to uh, base map. And this is where I can add um, different stuff. And I think you, you could find World Hill Shade in here, maybe. I don't know. I don't see it in here, actually. Do you guys see Hillshade or World Hillshade? Yeah. No. Nope. I see topographic. Yeah, I don't see the World Hillshade. That's weird why mine has it. Anyway, that's all base map data, right? So you, there's there's actually a bunch of other stuff you could use if you, if you wanted to. So just, just to be aware of it. I'm not going to do anything with it now, but I'm going to go over to the catalog here. And we're going to get some data elsewhere. So um, I, I, I want to point out folders. And this is your home folder, right? There's a little folder with a home icon by it. Yeah, so that's the, the folder you just created. And then inside of that, it built a, a, a three items. Um, one of them is just this import log, and we almost never use that. <laughs> um, but the other one, the, the one with the white can by it, that's called a geodatabase. And that's where you put, that's a container for your GIS data. It doesn't have to be, but it's a nice, it's a convenient place for it. It's an empty can right now, if you can think of it that, or a folder for this GIS data that you can get. So. Um, Let's let's uh, get some data. Um, how about I kind of want to do we could do a map of Farmington or something, or you could pick your own city. But let's see. So I'm going to go to the internet, and let's go to fmtn.org. That's the Farmington's official website, right? And in this, if you go to community, most cities, by the way, have like a GIS department where they do maps and they collect the geo data that they have, right? And I'll just show you what Farmington has for its geo data. We have some really good people working at the city, former students, right? I don't, well, some of them, I, you know, I don't know. Anyhow, um, if you go to, there should be like a, you might have moved it. Do we see maps and, yeah, what is GIS? Right here, maps and GIS is right in front of me. So um, I just want to get the downloadable data sets. There's some other stuff in there. It'd be fun to look through it and see what they're doing. Community, Community. yes, sorry. So if you hover over community, uh, it'll pull up this pull up. And then uh, under maps and GIS, we'll click on downloadable data sets. Yeah. Now, we don't all have to download the same thing, right? So I'm going to download. In fact, I think I've already downloaded some of the stuff. But they update it, maybe, every so often. So I'm going to download um, some stuff here. Let's see what they have. Should we all do different ones? We could. We could. It's all going on the same map, right? Or we each have individual maps. Well, you know, we kind of want our own copies, but it's a lot faster to copy a file than to download the file from the same place, like a bunch of times. So it's faster if we just make the file copy instead of all download the same thing. Um, but yeah, let's do a couple things. Here's some, you know, I don't really have a clear idea of what the map's going to look like right now, but. But really, as we talk about cartography and things like that, um, that's why we make maps is because we have an idea of what we want to show. <laughs> In this example, we're just kind of throwing stuff together and see what it looks like. So that it's very different from a typical map. So just to keep in mind that kind of stuff. But here's some cool stuff, right? So the city boundary is one thing I, I would like to see. So 
there are three kinds of files, right? There's an SHP, a KML, and a DXF. I doubt they all work, but um, the SHP should work, and that's called a shape file. And it's not just one file. It's a bunch of files, but it's all red, and, and they're interconnected, right? So, um, so it's, it's sort of confusing if you look through Windows at it, but if you look at through the GIS at it, it sees it as like one piece of data, but it's a bunch. So I'll show you that actually. So I'm gonna click on, you all don't have to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead, it's not very big, it's just, so it should download really fast. If you want to, go ahead, I guess, because it's very small. Even at home, you guys could do this and, and get that data, and you could pop it in QGIS if, you're, if you, you know, don't have the ArcGIS set up yet, which is totally great. So there it is. Um, unfortunately, it comes in as a zip file because a shape file consists of like five or six different files sometimes. It, at the very least, three, but probably more. So I'm gonna click on the little, uh, and I'm gonna show it in the folder. Yeah, I'm using Chrome here. Um, that's why I don't use the Microsoft products like Edge or whatever, Edge. Really? Thank you. 
have that box without food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have degrees to go through. And that's what I'm looking at. I'm just some downloaded stuff, right? Mr. Sevy? Yes. Uh, so I finally got the, the RGIS installed on my computer and I was trying to get logged into it and it gave me that message saying that I couldn't get logged in because I have a public account. Right. So don't try to log in. You should be able to do this without logging in. So down at the bottom of that window where it wants you to log in, there's a configure your license settings. And this is where the other students are getting tripped up and, or not tripped up, but it wasn't working. But I want to see if it works for you. And if okay. not, I'm, I'll have to look into it. But so if you configure your license settings, change it back to single use and see if that works. Okay, let me give that a shot real quick. Okay. Am I allowed to have your <laughs> oh, and, and by the way, when you come in, just, just to be safe, we have a spray bottle and towels to wipe your area down before you, before you use it and after you use it. Okay. So that way. Um, I'm not breaking all kinds of rules today. <laughs> <laughs> under, the, uh, under the authorization options, is it the, the I have installed my software, I need to authorize it? Um, let's see if I can remember right. Let me go back to this. If you go back to so you went to single use and authorize? Yeah. Okay, so that worked. So no, the third option is I have a license file and um, so use that third option and then browse for the file and then use that file that's in the uh, that's on canvas mm -hmm. if you haven't downloaded it just go to canvas and, and download that 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 file that I'm that I put there and then you then wherever you downloaded it like in your downloads folder or whatever you can browse for it and then find it and then proceed from there okay that should work 
wonder why yours worked and the other two didn't. It may be because they signed in first, or I don't know. I don't know if they did sign in first. I think Nadia had tried it before she signed in, and it still didn't work. Yeah, I was trying it before I signed in, and it didn't work. Huh. But I've been able to follow along with you through everything through ArcGIS Pro, so it's it's been okay. Okay. All right. Cool. All righty. I guess we're ready to get started again. Cancel that. Back. Okay, so now I'm looking at the zipped file, right? So does maybe everybody unzips things slightly differently? I don't know. Um, Windows will unzip stuff, right? So if you right click on it, you can extract all. I use a different uh, unzip program called 7-Zip, which is an open source zipper, unzipper. <laughs> Uh, zipping is just a matter of compressing and compiling multiple files into one. So it makes it convenient for downloading or uploading or something like that or file sharing and things. Uh, unzip, 7-zip uh, is what I use. Um, it has a nice, um, well, I can just click on extract here. There's an option for that. So it just does it without any other intervention. Windows, if you click extract all, gives you this window in which you have to browse, which is okay. You know, it's just a couple other steps. And I would, you know, click on, I would unzip it to my folder. I'm trying to find my folder. It's alphabetized differently in different folders. So DWS. Where's this uh, intro folder? And I'm going to put it right in my intro folder. So um, there so it is. So for like those of us at home, like will we just put it in the new folder that we created? Yes, exactly. Okay. Good, good question. Yes, thank you. So I'm going to select the folder. This is Windows, right? And then uh, I don't want to show the extracted files. Well, actually, I do. I'm, I'm just going to click that. You don't have to, but whatever. Okay, there they are, and I can verify in the in the path up here that they're in that folder, and here they are. You should see, I guess there's five of them, right? There's five city limits files that were in that zipped file. And they all have the same name. Now you might not see the extension. What I, what's called an extension is the .dbf, which is a database file, or a PRJ, which is a projection file, which we'll explain later. And, and so forth. The SHP file is actually what the shape of it is, the geometry, like the, the corners and the locations of them by, by coordinate. Um, the SHX is actually the index file that, com that, that lets the files read each other, right? It's the hub of the whole thing. And the XML file is just an auxiliary it's an XML language, extensible markup language file that, that's built. Um, not all of them have that, but you know, it's, it's great for uh, metadata kind of stuff, but we'll get to that too. So anyway, those four, five, I mean, files uh, constitute the shape file. So as, and, and, and I point that out because I'm gonna go ahead and close those, I'm all done. And I come back in here and I don't see it, right? That's because ArcGIS will not refresh the folder. It won't show anything new unless you force it to, right? So a right click on that folder and a refresh. Oh, there it is. Now you see that city limits shape file is, is in there and it's, and it's shown as a single file except for the XML, <laughs> which will be shown separately anyway, but we, we don't care. In fact, you could set the settings to not show those XML files, but we'll do that later again. So here it is. And so now I'm gonna, I wanna add that city limits to my map. So any questions? If, if you didn't download it or whatever, I'm gonna share that. See, I have another folder in the, let me see. In the classes folder, I have a, we're, okay, right here. I have a class data folder. 
So this is a folder where I can put files where everybody else can copy and paste those files to your own. So we can share that way. A lot of file sharing and copying and pasting and renaming and things like that. It, it's not a good idea to share the same file, like to actually use the same file on the map. Because anything you do to it, it happens, it, it may mess things up. Okay. So, um, what I could do, I don't want to do it in Windows, but if I, you know, well, I can't really do it here unless I do something else. Like, um, I don't see that class data folder because I'm one level in, right? I'm in my BWS folder, and in fact, I'm inside of that. Um, inside of that, I'm in that GIST intro folder. But maybe I want to add a connection, right? So if I go, if I right click on folders, I can add a folder connection, and and map. It's like connecting to a different folder, right? <laughs> Makes sense, I guess. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go to my GIS 115 folder and call that good. So now I have two connections, one to my project folder where I want all the data, and then this other folder where I can see everybody else's stuff, right? <laughs> this is useful if you want to share files or copy and paste files from one place to another or whatever. So, and that's what I want to do. Did anybody not get that city's limits folder yeah, file? Some reason mine didn't, I don't okay, great. I think that's good because what I want to do is just copy it to yours, right? Oh, okay. So, um, so when I tried to unzip that file, it didn't seem like it worked. It doesn't show that it's in the folder that I unzipped it to. Oh, okay. Um, try right clicking in ArcGIS. Try right clicking and refreshing that folder. Right click on that folder and refresh it. Like your your um, in my case, um, it's, it's the GIS intro, and then try that refresh. Well, see, I was actually looking at it in my files, like in my file manager. Yeah. And it doesn't show that it that any files were really. Important. Oh, okay. In Windows, is not showing it, huh? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I, and I tried it twice. Let me go yeah, back. So, um, Where is it? It's in my downloads. So extract all. So yeah, if you do extract all, what does it say right here? Is it just pay attention to where it's going? Maybe it's just going somewhere where you're not sure. Is it in your downloads folder? Maybe? Uh, no, no, I, I, I'm putting it on GIS, GIST uh, 115 intro. Like I made one that's basically named the same as yours. Okay. And I put it on my desktop. Um, so I'm selecting that folder. <laughs> Um, and then pressing extract. And it doesn't go there, huh? And you're showing the extracted files when the complete. And does yeah, it? So as soon as, mm -hmm. it, it shows as them then, huh? Yeah. So, so when, it's it's just showing me the files that are in there are I have dot backups. Um, the basically the same name as the folder, but it's uh, called the dot gdb and then i have import log index um and then two like one looks like a briefcase and then one looks like a page and one's a tbx and the other one is the actual arcgis project file uh, so kind of like this right yeah but it doesn't have like the city limits never popped up on there those five files, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if it's maybe just an error in my computer or... Yeah, if, it, if, if you're... If it's not showing in there, it's got to... It, I, I have to think that it got extracted somewhere else. Maybe... Is there another folder inside, maybe in the import log, or maybe it got accidentally thrown into one of these? Oh, you know what? It may, because Windows sees that, G, that geo database as a folder, mm -hmm. right? So if you, let's double click that. Do you see it inside of this? There's gonna be a bunch of stuff in here, but 
Do you see the city ones in there? Maybe? Just a guess. No. No? Well, that's good because you don't want it in there. But. Huh. Uh -huh. And it, uh, like, when I press on the, the city limits file itself, like the zipped file, like, it shows me all of the files in there. Is there a way to just export those? Yeah, yeah. If you, um, yep. Let me go back to my, I'll show you. <laughs> so if you double click it, it shows this, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, try just highlighting them, right click and copy, and then go back no to. Go back to your GIS folder. I'm going to put it in the class data folder, by the way. Maybe there's a bunch of stuff. And then paste them into the folder. Yeah. See if that works. I'm going to try it too, just to see. Yeah, I think that'll work. I don't know. It maybe it just doesn't like those files because, yeah, copy and paste in it, and it doesn't like it. It won't do it either. <laughs> huh? It could be you have a Windows setting that, that or maybe a, a virus software that's not letting you uh, unzip stuff to that folder for some reason. Or, well, that doesn't make sense. Right, but and it's, but the thing is, is it. It's not giving me any error messages or anything like that. It just blocks just, it, really. It sounds like it's just yeah, blocking it's, it. Yeah, it's just not doing it. Okay. Um, and, and that may be the reason why you're not, well, I don't know. Try just putting it into your documents folder. Just copy, just go back to your, like your documents and just make a folder in here, right? and paste it in there. I don't think it'll work. Yeah, there's my stuff. And see if it pastes it in the documents. It could be because of where the folder is, maybe, I don't know. Hmm. And just go into like my documents folder? Yeah. Nothing happened there. By the way, if you click, like if you're in your documents, you can tell where it is on your computer just by clicking up in that box, the URL box or whatever, and it can show you the path, right? The path is the how the files find each other, right? So it goes through the C drive, right? That's the, the actual physical hard drive on the computer, and then it goes to the folders in that C drive, and they can be many, but um, that sometimes you can copy and paste that if you need to <laughs> to find stuff. So that's a useful useful thing to do. Did were you able to copy and paste those files to your to your documents on your computer? No. Oh. Okay. So you have a setting somewhere, and I don't know where though. Uh, that is blocking you from being able to. And it could be your virus software. Do you have like antivirus software on your computer? No, so, well, uh, I actually, cause I was having issues getting to be able to download the ArcGIS on my computer because it was blocking it. It, 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 kept, it keeps saying like virus scan failed for everything that I try to download. So uh -huh. the way that I've kind of figured around it is I actually share it to my Chromebook put it on a USB drive and then switch it back onto my other computer. But I actually have completely uninstalled all of my, like to try and remedy it. I've tried to, I've uninstalled all of my virus software and everything like that. I don't know where the setting is. I've gone into like all of the settings. I don't really know what's going on or why it would be blocking everything like that. Yeah. Cause I've gone um, into my browser setting. I've gone into, that, I've that's a tried good... to, I've uninstalled all of my um, virus software and everything. I don't know. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's not the virus software now. Do you have, by any chance, like Office on that computer, um, like OneNote or um, OneDrive, maybe it's called? Because I, Microsoft... I have Microsoft Office on here. Okay. So a lot of times, and this is kind of sneaky, uh, and Microsoft's kind of um, doing this, where it's putting your files on the cloud. And that prevents you from being able to like, so you go to documents or, or folders that you think are on your computer and they're really in the cloud. And I don't think ArcGIS Pro is going to read that. <laughs> and, and it's probably, and it, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to the cloud and not your computer, in other words. So you got to be sure, especially on, on laptops and, and portable devices and stuff, uh, Microsoft kind of wants to you to use their cloud server because you know they can they can justify themselves and take your information and stuff right <laughs> or at least sell it right so <laughs> um yeah i say I'm yeah, it's, tell, it's telling me that i'm not signed into office even on here yeah so yeah it's it's a little tricky mm to not save it onto the cloud, right? To the OneDrive cloud. You have to like go to the C drive and go to users. Like, so I get a file, I would, I would like, when I go to, like if I copied those files, like you have them copied, then go to local disk C, go to users, find your name, and then see there's OneDrive right there. That's that little booger. And um, so. Yeah, I see OneDrive. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, and, and there's your documents and stuff too, right? I, you know, and, and that allows you to, you know, find your stuff and you can be sure that it's actually on the computer. That, that's, that's an interesting problem. I'm, I'm, you know, and without seeing it and stuff. So if that doesn't work, Maybe we can, um, I can, you can bring it in or whatever, and maybe we can troubleshoot that. I'm just guessing. Yeah, I'll right probably now. have to do that because it's telling me that there's there's nothing in my in my OneDrive or anything like that. There's okay. okay. I don't have any files in there. Yeah, and then no. so if that's the case, then you're not extracting it to the OneDrive and things like that. So maybe there's something just blocking you being able, maybe you don't have permission to copy and paste files, right? So that, that I don't know, is it, it's your computer that you, you have administrative yeah, this login? Is, this is, if mm -hmm. you could install the software, I'm sure you did. So eh. there may be certain folders that are read only. That, oh, that might be it too. Right. So if you right click on a folder and go to its properties, um, you can see if it's read only, and you can uncheck that if you uh, um, possibly. But there's a lot of issues with that as well. So, wait, how did you do that? Oh, just right click whatever folder. So in your case, that uh, the the big folder. So if you have it in your documents, maybe I don't know if documents will have that or not. Yeah. So um, under attributes. Mine says read only, but I can write to it. <laughs> um, so that only applies to files. Like you can't, so you can put files in there, but the folder, so if you uncheck that, I don't think I have privileges to do that. So, yeah, maybe that. Because I have, like, I have a different access on everything else. I don't know, that's weird. Yeah, maybe we can troubleshoot that. Um, gee, if you can't even extract, try just in your downloads, just extracting it right to your downloads folder. You just work out of that, maybe. If it allowed you to download something to it, well, it see, might I, was wondering, I was wondering if I might be able to extract it on my Chromebook and then just do the extracted files onto the zip or the flash drive and. Okay. Or yeah, just work with the USB drive. That might work too. That's a good idea. In fact, in here, when we work on projects and stuff and you do want to work at home, it may be a good idea to work off a jump drive so you can just go back and forth. 
That's a good point. All right. Okay. So we'll, we'll give you time to do that, but I just want to talk about a few more things. So um, I want to add this city's shape file to the map. That'll be fun. So it's, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is just click and drag it into the map. <laughs> so there. There it is. Yeah. If we download more than one, could we drag it, or you just want us to do the one for now? Um, yeah, let's do a couple, right? So um, let's go back to the city's website and see what they have for us. What else? I downloaded a few already. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like uh, roads, right? Maybe roads are a good reference, like kind of base map data, but they also can be the focus of a map. Like here's the road map of Farmington or something like that, right? So um, yeah, let's. In fact, I've, I've downloaded these uh, previously. I, you know, I have some of these, I'm sure. Let's see. If I can go we, to. Can we drag, can we drag the uh, shapefile or one of the other ones? The shape, yeah. The, shape the only other one you should see at all is the XML. Yeah. And so just leave that alone. Okay. In fact, where's the settings for your catalog? Anyway, so where's my class data is what I'm looking for. So in the class data folder, just to give us some time, I do have an FMTN folder in the class data folder. So if you make a connection to that and you want to take like, here's the Farmington roads, I already have them downloaded, right? So I'm going to, well, in order for you to find that, you need to make that connection, right? You connect to that class data folder. Well, actually, I didn't connect directly to the class data folder. I connected to the GIST 115 folder, which allows me to, to drill down into all the other folders in it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, except I can't see other people's. Really? Or am I only supposed to see my? Naturally, we'd want to. Oh, I didn't. I didn't do my roads yet. So I'm going to right click on roads and copy, and then scroll back up to my folder and just right click on my intro folder and paste. So now I have city limits and Farmington roads shape. Shape. <laughs> Where did you get the roads? I missed the presentation. Yeah, it's in the class data folder in the FMTN folder. There's some other stuff in there too that we'll play with. I mean, work with. You should be in the. Um, Thank you. 
Okay, so I think I got it, but how do you open it onto ArcGIS now? Okay, so you have it in the folder in, um, so go back to ArcGIS, and in the catalog, uh -huh. you'll need to refresh that folder, because you use Windows to, to make the copy and stuff. So, right, like, yeah, I got, I got it refreshed, and it's showing me citylimits.shp now. Yeah, so just click and drag it over. Here's onto mine. the map? Yeah. So here's mine, and I'm just going to click, drag, and let go. And there it oh, goes. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you have the streets. I didn't, I didn't get the streets, but I got the boundaries, I think. Okay. And yeah, at home, um, just go back to your farming FMTN website, and there's a uh, well, I'll just show you. There's the road center lines, right? Mm -hmm. They actually spent the time, they put a GPS unit on one of their trucks and they drove around and recorded the streets. That's, uh, so, okay. that's what we have. That's one way to do it. <laughs> that is one way to do it. Yeah, exactly. It looks like they have some other projects in the works, um, some parks and rec stuff like city parks, and but those are not clickable links. They they just haven't gotten there yet. But we will. <laughs> like when I downloaded the rivers and lakes, it only did it to DXF. Oh, oh, okay. That actually is okay. Let's do that. This is like another chapter, but that's totally great. And I, I want to see it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so. I think I even picked the shape folder, but when it did it, it just right. Okay, so here's a good problem. Um, we have a different file format, right? We have this DXF, which is a drawing exchange format. Um, AutoCAD, it's a CAD format. So they drew it in CAD, whatever. So um, not whatever, we gotta deal with it, right? <laughs> so in here, um, it looks like, which one's your folder? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. hey, there we go. Yeah. So I'm going to steal it. <laughs> Not really. No, I did it. So. I'm going to get a little scared again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing with the buttons. <laughs> so here's, here's, it's already downloaded, right? So I'm going to copy it. I'm using Windows this time because maybe I'm not going to see it in ArcGIS Pro because it's not really GIS data, but I bet it will be actually. Actually, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at it. Okay, so um, it's not showing up, you mean? So like, like I'm in this WBDB folder, um, Wes's folder or whatever, and so I'm going to refresh it for me and then I'll look inside this and I should see, yeah, uh, no, Rivers and Lakes XML. Up, go up. It's up at the, up oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can actually add this to the map, but you can't do much with it in that DXF format. Um, you can do some things. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to even copy and paste it. I'm going to go back up to my folder in my intro folder. Where's my, wait a minute. Refresh, that's my intro. There we go, wasn't showing up. See how it doesn't, it doesn't like to show you stuff unless you refresh it like a lot. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna import it into my geo database, this empty container. This is a great time to convert a file just by importing it from one format into another. So it's not going to be a shape file. It'll be a geodatabase file. It'll 
It's called a feature class. I'm going to convert it from a DXF file to a layer, basically, but a feature class is what they call it. So simply enough, I'm going to right click it, import, feature class. <laughs> Make sense? So I get this little form to fill out. So it wants to know where it is. So I'm going to go find it in Wes's folder. Should I do the same thing? Because I can't use it unless I do this too, right? Yeah, you can import it from your own folder to that geodatabase. In fact, I was thinking in the back of my mind, maybe we should do all the shape files into the geodatabase, but you know, it's all in one folder anyway. So right. yeah, so for now that's not a big deal, but later that might be a nice thing to do. So there it is and open. Oh wait. Oh oh yeah. And so these are rivers and lakes. So there may be polygons and polylines involved with that. Um, but I'm going to try poly, well, lakes. I'm just going to do the polyline right now. Polygon, I'm sorry. So polygons are closed shapes, right? Like lakes. <laughs> Rivers are like lines. So there may be two entities. So a drawing file can have both. But a shape file or a feature class can only contain one at a time as layers. That separates that kind of file. In, in, so I'm going to import it twice, really. So that's. That's what I mean. and you want to open it, you don't want to do the whole rivers and lakes file. Anymore. No. You want to go into here and individual. Yes. I don't think it'll let you anyway. I think you have to go to the, the type of drawing. That, and see, it recognizes it as a CAD polygon feature or a CAD polyline feature or a point feature. I doubt there are any points in it anyway. That's just a default list of things it can handle. So polygon and OK. And then what's the name? Well, because it's Polygon, I'm going to name it uh, FMTN Lakes. How about that? Yep. Now, here's this is another chapter discussion. But this, this won't work very well unless I specify um, the, the reference system that it's based on, right? I mean, they drew it somehow, and they measured it, and they placed it. It's not going to place it well if I, if I don't know where it is, right? So if I go to um, environments, see this output coordinate system? I have to actually know what coordinate system it's using. I'm not real sure, but I'm just going to use the current map because the data, the map's coordinate system, the, the way it's showing the data on the screen and where it is, it could be using different coordinate systems, and we'll talk about those in another chapter, but um, it's the map. See, there it is. This, this coordinate system right now is what Farmington uses, so I'm guessing that the, the boundaries and the roads are in the same coordinate system as the rivers and lakes. So, I'm just taking this guess and I'm going to run it. Click run. And it should automatically add it to the map. So it's reading all that information. There it goes. And it lines up. I see it on the map. So I guess that was a good guess. Even if you picked a different coordinate system, it would have converted it if it had read it. But it, I don't know that that would work with a CAD file. So it was a good guess. And that's I good of Farmington to keep their stuff in the same coordinate system. They're managing their data well, is what. So good job on those guys. All right. I got, I got to where you're at, but I don't, I don't know how you got to where you're at. <laughs> I think I understand <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> so. Like I have, my, I have my lakes and everything on here and the roads, I, but I, I, I didn't see any of what you were just talking about. Oh, the, so you like, know, like you have the deal. No, Zayden, get down. Sorry. <laughs> Zayden sounds happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he was trying to talk to you guys. Um, anyway, he the. Hey, Zayden. <laughs> 
no the geo processing and stuff like i or and changing it to a cab a cab file you said um it's actually it downloads from the city as a cad file we're going to import it into our geo database as a feature class a geo database feature class is what it's called after this okay because it mine downloaded as like a dxf yes that's the cad file so okay. what you're going to do is in your catalog you're going to right click on your geo database that white can Okay, right click. And, and import, here I'll just kind of, can you see this? Yeah. So we're going to import it as a feature class. Okay. You could do the same thing going the other way. You could right click on the DXF and export it into the geodetic. <laughs> okay, see, yeah, the way that I did it is basically the way that we did it with the oh. SHX or SHS, whatever, SH, whatever. Oh. No, I don't. The first, yeah, the, first the, file. the cab and file did, won't do that. It, I don't know. It did when I like press when I dragged and dropped. It put everything on the map. It's not colored like yours. It's in like black, okay. black and gray. Yeah. But. So ArcGIS can show cab files, right? But we mm -hmm. want to convert them to feature classes where they have where we have a lot more control, we can do more with them. So there's a reason to convert them or import it like this. So, okay. so yeah, we want to do this. But you're right. It'll totally show it. OK. But, um, and then after, after I get it to the import, now it's that geo processing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so you get this window. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be, so. Um, you pick the polygon. We're going to do the polygon first, but I'm going to also do the poly lines for all the river parts that uh, just show lines. Okay, it didn't give me that option. It's input features. It's just giving me. Oh, oh, never mind. I'm just yeah. Polygon. Yeah, you have to browse for it. Yeah. It's yeah. It's after like the name of the. Right. It's inside the DXF file as as features inside that. CAD file, yeah. So I wonder at this point if I can pick up, no, I can't. So I'm going to browse for it again. I'm going to do it again for the, for the poly lines, right? So I'm going to pick poly line. It goes right back to the DXF and all those features in it. So I'm going to do it again here. Poly line this time. And I'm going to call it FMTN river. Or rivers. And under environments, same thing. And I'll just run it. I don't know what this is going to do because I see most of the river. Yeah, this is just the center line of the rivers. Maybe I don't even want that. Let me zoom in. It's a little darker. Yeah. So really, the lakes and the rivers, it's kind of the, well, I don't know, it's a little different. Oh, that's the topo map behind it. <laughs> I'm turning that off now. So it's telling me that um, feature class to feature class failed is what it's telling me. Oh. Huh. I, you know what? I, you know, as things progress like that, I think what's happening is is your folder is read only, and so it's not letting stuff come in. Maybe. It's, that's what it's sounding like to me now. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Oh, it, it worked that time. Uh, it worked as polygon, but not polyline. OK, well, we don't want the polylines anyway. I'm not sure why the polyline didn't work, but OK. <laughs> All right. Well, good. I'm glad it worked. I'm going to turn the line off, because um, that's, that's the same thing as the polygons. I, so. We don't want both. In fact, I could turn it off, or I could right click it and just remove it from the map. So you can add layers, right, by just dragging them in, but you can also take them away. It doesn't delete them or anything, right? In the catalog, you can delete stuff, so be careful. But as far as the map's concerned, you can add stuff and take stuff out all day long. 
All right. So yeah, I'm gonna take it away. So, so now I have three layers, right? I think that's enough layers to kind of go on, right? We could certainly add more, <laughs> but um, I, I want to talk about just um, symbolizing, right? Just showing the map a little better because it's sort of well, it's pretty, but it's not very pretty. <laughs> okay, so. Um, on the left, you see your table of contents, right? You, you have your contents there, and it tells you, you know, it picked the color for you, it picked everything for you when you dragged it in there, but you can control that. So that's, that's next. So are you ready? Okay. Let's try the boundary. Let's try the city limits. There's a lot of things we can do with that. So I'm just going to click on the the, what do you call that, a little swatch, <laughs> the symbol for it, right? And off to the right, you should see symbology instead of catalog, right? Okay. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Um, so there are preset uh, in the gallery. So you have some tabs going on in the symbology. Back up to the top, you have gallery and properties. And so in the gallery, there's just all kinds of stuff. And maybe there's actually city boundary, you know. Maybe not. A lot of stuff, but I don't see, is there a boundary one? We could search. It didn't find any. It's too bad. All style. No, didn't find it. You can import stuff. But anyway, um, so I didn't find qu quite what I want. So I'm going to go to properties, right? And I can just make it what I want. <laughs> okay. So you now they give you a big old, you know, uh, view of what it looks like. So you have, you have, well, there are three main properties here. There are the color, and then the outline color, and then the outline width, right? So how thick the boundary is, and what the color of the boundary is, and what the color of the inside is. So maybe for this map, maybe if I do want the topographic map on or something, maybe I want no color for the inside, for the fill. So it's filled with no color. And the outline color, uh, maybe I want that a slightly darker black or gray. And maybe a thicker width, maybe two points. So nice thick boundary going around. And let's apply that and see what it looks like. And if you don't like it, you know, change it, right? So here's the city boundary. It's a thicker outline and it's hollow, right? So I can see through it and stuff. Would you be able to see your? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's turn that on. That's a good idea. See? So yeah, I can see. Good, good question. Okay. Um, yeah. So you're right. So with it, with no color, you can see through the. And there's also. Um, what's the let's let's actually pick a color then. And I'm going to pick, uh, let's try fuchsia or amethyst. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, that's really great. I have this horrible taste in color, right? So, uh, <laughs> but now I can't see the topo map through it. But you can actually, um, under the appearance tab, see, now that I have a layer selected, I have some extra options up in the ribbon uh, options. So, so um, here's uh, transparency. So what if I just uh, make it a little less uh, transparent, or a little more transparent, I should say. Yeah, still looks like crap, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's two ways to make it transparent, right? This is the entire layer being transparent. So I don't know what that would do with labeling and stuff like that. So maybe that's not a great idea. So I'm going to put this back. 
what I could do is back in symbology here for the symbol and its color, I can go to color properties and maybe I'll just change the transparency here and apply. So now the back, the, the border didn't get affected and now the inside does, right? And so you have all kinds of control over that. So. Okay, and we can play with that all day too, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll go on. Yeah, but this isn't the color I want, right? This is not the color I was looking for and stuff, but I'm gonna go on. Um, well, actually, I'm just gonna change it back to no color. <laughs> that was, that's kind of annoying. Okay. That looks way better in my opinion, but you know, it depends on what I'm trying to show. Bright colors supposedly have have a psychological effect of being in your face, right? So they they have there's there's something called a visual hierarchy. We'll talk about that when you get to cartography and stuff. But usually brighter colors are what you're supposed to be focused on. And so you put the like if this was going to be a road map, I'd want brighter colors on my roads instead of other things. So that would stand out better. Than, but you also have to worry about you know if you use colors that are alarming like red or orange or something like that, and you're trying to do like a COVID map and you color it red or something like that, that might be bad. <laughs> so, okay. All right, um, labels. We, we also, um, well, let's, uh, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's look at the roads just a little bit. Before I get to labeling, I wanna color the roads, right? But, um, well, this isn't going to work out very well. So I'm going to click on the little swatch under roads, and uh, maybe I want them to be a little thinner because there's a lot of them. So maybe half a point. By the way, what's a point? A PT. You ever heard that before? Point? Like, yeah, I've seen it, but I, don't, I guess I don't know what that's actually is. That's the same kind of point from like pens and stuff. We sort of. Oh, um, it's related. It is the width, right? And so pens are also, you know, pencils or mechanical pencils have a certain diameter to them, and, and that's just the simple diameter. But and this is also the width in a measurement, and a point is the same thing as as what you see in like Microsoft Word or whatever when you type in your font. 12 point font or 10 point font or whatever. A point is 172nd of an inch. <laughs> yeah, leave it to typography to come up with that, I guess. A 72nd of an inch, right? <laughs> so 36 point font would be half an inch and so forth. Anyway, half a point would be quite thin. That's 144th of an inch. So pretty thin, but but okay. And maybe I want the color to be like a gray. So I want it to kind of sit back a little bit more. Let's apply that and see what I get. So now I, you know, did, did you notice, I don't know if you can see it on the screen well, but it seems like the Togo map kind of set up a little bit. I could see it easier. And that's because I put like a light gray and made it thin. So there you go. Okay, um, but I, I want to do just a little bit more with that road. You know, they all shouldn't be, it looks kind of horrible this way too. What if I make the roads, I, I want like the big roads to be thicker and the like just the back roads or whatever, the minor roads, if you will, to be thinner. Can I do that? As it turns out, you can, because that's what it, that's kind of the idea behind the GIS. The information can affect how you see it, right? Not just where things are, but how things look. So, so this is how you do that. I'll just show you right now. We have we have five minutes. I can show you that. 
So I have the road layer highlighted in the table of contents, right? Let's click on it. That's there. So I'm going to go to symbology, and I have all kinds of options to symbolize. That's not really a word if you look it up. But anyway, it's it's adding symbolization, or <laughs> it's just changing colors. <laughs> it's a good word. So. Yeah, it does. <laughs> You can go home and sound like you learned something today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We talked about symbology in class today. Anyway, um, and sounds better than I'm gonna color these roads pink. Yeah, we we, we colored by number or we symbolize. What do you think, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, right now it's that single symbol. That means that all the options, all the items get colored the same way, right? But what if I do maybe unique values and there's graduated colors? But graduated colors are better for um, like elevation, like on this map. You probably see that on your Anyway, the higher elevations are brown and white, the lower elevations are green and blue. Okay, so that's graduated colors. It's, they kind of blend into each other, like light blue and darker green and then up to yellow and brown and stuff. We can do that, but roads probably isn't a great idea to do that, but um, unique values would be, so let's try that. Okay, so in the symbology panel, we have some unique values, and we're going to use, okay, where it says field one, those are the attributes of the roads, but we don't know what that is. But we can look at them. So I want to look at what data came with the city's yeah, when we downloaded it from the city, we want to see what it is. So I'm going to right click on the layer over here and open up an attribute table. So we can actually look at the data that they populated with the roads. So you can also do control T. That'll open up the attribute table. You can also hold the control key and double click it. <laughs> and anyway, there's three ways you can open up the attribute table. Well, it puts it down here. Um, I'd rather, I'm going to dock it up at the top here. See where I have the map? So I'm going to move this up where I can kind of see it better. So I'm going to pop it up here and dock it. So now I can pop between the map and the attribute table. Is that okay? All right, One more it. time, how do you get to the attribute table? There's three ways. One way is right clicking and going to attribute table. Or control T. It even tells you, do you see that little pop-up that says control T? Open table. Or you can hold the control key down and double click the layer and that'll pop up the attribute table. So I just docked it up at the top. Look at all these fields here. Fields are columns. Okay. And features, the different roads are in rows. Roads are rows. So, yeah, look at that. 2,943 roads in Farmington. Yeah, there you go. Makes you want to work for the city, doesn't it? Okay. Um, how about suffix, right? That's the type of street it is. I don't know what kind of suffix there are, but um, I would think a street has a higher speed limit maybe, or maybe it's a bigger road than a court or something, right? <laughs> yeah. So maybe I could, well, in the, you know, I only got one minute left. So I'm gonna use suffix, in other words. So go back to the map. I'm gonna choose from these fields. Here's a list of all the fields, right? And there's suffix. There we go. Oh. So now it's coloring and it's using this weird color scheme. <laughs> That's not a good color scheme. Let's try something else. Yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> um, what are roads like? Maybe um, browns or teratones or yellows? I don't know. Yellows for the big main ones. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, yeah, that's actually not too bad. So um, if I zoom in, yeah. they're still kind of thin. I could actually symbolize their thickness with 
the different type of road it is and stuff too. But anyway, we're out of time. Um, that's just a quick intro, adding some data and manipulating the data a little bit for, for map making. We'll continue this and there's some more stuff I want to talk about, like um, how to print a map out. And, you know, there's more stuff to this. So we'll continue this on uh, Tuesday, right? Sweet. Okay, and we'll try to get you guys online um, straightened out on your licensing. I'm not sure what's... Is there any particular way I need to save this? Oh yeah, let's talk about saving it. Um, we're kind of over time, but yeah, it's just a simple matter of, it's gonna save it in that same folder, so it's all good. So you just go to project save. There's actually, you can, there's a save button up here, isn't there? Yeah, there's the save. Where's the save? Oh, I already Remember, saved this. It? Yeah, it's saving it in that folder that we made. In that. Oh, you didn't make it. Oh, um, when we come back, that for this one, we're just going to leave it where it is. So you just save it and it'll be there. So when we open up ArcGIS again, it'll just be in that recent list. And we'll just start again on Tuesday. So we're good. But if we did create a folder, it's going to go into the home one and under our name. Yeah. Or our initials. Yeah. yeah. All right. That was good work today. I'm glad we straightened some of that stuff out. We'll try to get everybody straightened out. Uh, I think that's cool. All right. Cool. I like it too. It's fun. It is. So, the zombie apocalypse could go. We got to have this. Take it easy. We'll see you Tuesday. <laughs> All right, so um, any questions? Any other questions? Um, where will the recording for the Zoom be so that I can refer back to it? Oh, yeah, let me stop recording. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to post it. I'll make a YouTube video of it so I can embed it into um, the class in Canvas because it's going to be too big otherwise. So um, I'll have to edit it a little bit to take out, just to shorten it up as much as I can. So um, it'll take a few days, but I'll have it in maybe over the weekend. I can get it okay. done. So yeah, okay. good question. Good. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um,